Hello. Yo. What's up, man? Hey. Uh, where's your dude? Uh, said he was unable to join the call as they need to update Skype first or they're offline. Yeah, oh, your, yours says that to me every time, though, so that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Dame says oh, really? it to me, too, so I don't oh. necessarily believe that. I think it just says that if you're not using a computer version of Skype. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I shot him a two-minute warning text, a message he didn't respond, so. Yeah. So who's this dude? Is he like your real life buddy? Dude listens to Destiny show. What's what's his name? Yeah, he's he's a coworker of mine, and oh, okay. uh, he listens he listens to the Destiny show. Cool. What's he think about it? He, you know, he likes it. He okay. he doesn't play Destiny too much. You know, he he listens to like mm. the Weapon Wheel and all the a lot of other podcasts. So I asked him to listen and tell me what he thought. You know. Okay. Cool. But I don't know what what's going on with him. He's a wall, I guess. Mm. So I don't know if you want to push this off till tomorrow to see if we can get Dame and you know, at least have Dame. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of actually busy now tomorrow because I actually found out when I was leaving today I have to go back and work in Seattle tomorrow. Oh, so and tomorrow's Saturday. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> so, I don't know. We'll give it a little bit of time, and if not, uh, I'm fucking getting on the division. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So you finally got your PS4 and all this shit? Everything's up and running? Yeah, I did. It's great. That's awesome. <laughs> I haven't... Yeah, man. I've been pretty busy the last two days. I haven't talked much to you about it. Yeah, yeah. Do you get, your, uh, just... you get your Destiny thing all transferred over and stuff? Yeah, yeah, played a little bit today. Nice. What do you think about the uh, visual upgrade? Oh my god! <laughs> You're blind, I saw but the now PS3. You see. <laughs> I, yeah, I thought the PS3 was okay, but I'm like, oh man, the PS3 visually is a hunk of shit. And I've been <laughs> like, saying like, that from the very beginning. Yeah, like it's I mean, I was it's actually up... like a hundred percent worse than even the 360 version. Yeah, like I, I, I was in, I was on the moon. I just looked up. And I was like, "There's a fucking star. There's like a space station that bur burped a shit up there." <laughs> I was like, "What?" I was like, "What the fuck, man?" Yeah. I ran around. I ran around fucking Venus, just looking at the backdrops. Yeah, I mean that's what I did the very first time I played the game because the game has, it, it is still actually a gorgeous game. I mean, it's definitely, mm -hmm. it's definitely starting to look a little. Like, its art design is still excellent, and I think the graphics are still really good. But, like, other games are starting to, like, look really good. Like, uh, yeah. like things that stand out to me are, like, uh, Batman Arkham Knight is, like, the most insane-looking game I've ever played, period, still. And uh, The Division actually is really good, too, of course. Yeah, yeah. I played a little bit of that, too, so. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got the division, I got Black Ops Three, and I got Destiny. Yeah, sounds like you're set for a while. Yeah, I'll probably get the um, also like Far Cry Primal. Oh yeah. Yeah, you, you I, I kind of like the. You a Far Cry guy? Uh, yeah, I just I, I I've been watching a little bit of it, and it just looks interesting to me. So, you know, I'll give it a shot. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely interested to play it, like, but it's not on my my must have spend money list on it. Especially yeah, like no I didn't got... I didn't play four, basically. And yeah. like like I'm actually a Far Cry guy. Like I've played and beat every single Far Cry. So well, minus four and I guess primal now. Yeah, so yeah. I, I I got what you meant. Mm -hmm. Totally. But yeah, I mean you know, No Man's Sky looks amazing. Dude man, I I'm 100% like in on that game. Like I'm going to get that game and I'm just going to not exist for the next six months. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck it. I'm out. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. And there's so much stuff about that's coming in about that game. Cause like, uh, like, do you know, like what, what do you know about that game? That the plants are procedurally generated and it's basically you in a ship and you travel and there's sentinels 
That's it? Like, yeah, pretty much. Oh, my God. So, <clears throat> so what, uh, this, this, like, so first of all, the team that made the game is 10 people, like 10, like that's it. Yeah, like nine, nine, ten. <laughs> yeah. And, um, the dude who, like, wrote the engine and stuff has to be some kind of, like, super genius or something. Or, like, he just, like, he just figured something out because, like, people, like, ask him questions, like, you know, like, so, you know, uh, is, like, you know, uh, is there, like, going to be, like, rain on a planet? And, like, is there, like, a day-night cycle? And then, like, his answers are, um, he's like, well, that is determined by the, like, the the composition of the planet that is also based about, like, the rotation in relationship to the sun of, like, that particular system, which is, like, in relation to the other constellations. Like, he basically created a universe simulator on, oh, like, Jesus Christ. like, a scale because, like, um, like, if you literally look, like, on, like, Google right now, and it's, like, um, they're, like, well, so how many planets are there? And he's, like, nine quintillion. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck a quintillion is. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> um, and then they're, like, well, how big is each planet? And he's, like, well, they're a little bit smaller than Earth. And then they're, like, what do you mean? And it's, like, well, it would take you, like, three weeks to walk from one end of the planet to back around to where you were. Like each planet, what? like each fucking planet, uh, you know, and then it's like, and like the other thing that's like, I mean, it, des it definitely comes up, but not a lot of people are talking about it is that it's also like completely destructible. Like the terrain yeah. is destructible. You can burrow underground with a laser and like, it's not shown in video yet, but, um, what happened actually a week ago is, um, he uh because it's a british it's a british team so they took the game to uh, san francisco because that's where a lot of the video game media outlets are and yeah. uh he had uh like a bunch of them play it for like 40 minutes and it's the first time where he hasn't like been like guiding somebody playing it like he literally just let everybody play that play the game oh, and like his hands up walked out yeah and so like everybody's like and so there's like uh there's no videos like, there is a new video about that thing, but it's, like, the same video for everybody. Uh, but the if you read the articles attached to them, um, so I guess in the demo or however it was set up, you know, because obviously he's a developer, so he can, like, put you in particular places. Um, like, mm -hmm. everybody started out on an ice world with, like, a temperature gauge on their th on their suit indicating that, like, they needed to figure out a way to get off the fucking planet before they freeze to death. And so, like, everybody's thing started off on this ice planet, and then, like, you read, like, the same article, and it's like, oh, it was this ice planet, I did this, and oh, I fucked up, and I didn't get off the planet, but then I revived, and I was able to get off. And then, they, and then like, all of the articles become wildly different, because everybody goes to, like, a different planet or whatever, because it's, you know, it's their choice. And this one dude was talking about how, um, like, he went to this other world, and there were, like, these, like... Uh, factory observatory things and <laughs> apparently like you could like hack into the uh the factory and like go get a blueprint for like a new device that you could craft and like he failed a hacking because i guess in the game like you're allowed to hack but if you fail it once you're locked out permanently oh, oh wow. and so he was playing the game and he's like oh well i'm i'm locked into this factory like how do i how do I get out? I'm screwed, right? And then he's like, well, mm -hmm. you know, you could just you could just shoot a hole through the wall. <laughs> and he's like, what? <laughs> he's like, yeah, you could just, you know, I mean, you got like a you got like a like a heat laser, you could just melt the hole in the wall and escape that way. And so he talks about how he like melted the hole in the wall and then he was like escaping from like these these uh, robot sentinels and he took off in a spaceship and then he like goes up into orbit and then there's like a space battle going on that was completely ancillary to what he was doing and then he had to like escape from that thing and then he like warped to another system and he like ran out of fuel so then he had to sort of crash on another planet and like do mining to get more fuel and it's like oh my god it's so cool. Oh, man. Like, it's literally, it's everything I want in a video game. It's 
it's it's everything. Yeah, it sounds good. I saw I think I saw the IGN uh like ten minute review. Uh the one they one did the last guys. summer. Because they uh, they did a uh, they did a first hands on, where he was like showing them the game and then he let one of them play it for like ten minutes. Yeah, whatever one it was that they got attacked by, like the bird, like the the they're like look like turtles with like bird features and stuff. Yeah, it was like a little. It's like a. It was like an angry yeah, like, ram bird looking thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, one. and then he shot it, and the sentinels came after him. Yeah. Anyway, like I'm like it's literally my most anticipated game ever. Like I can't think of a time where I've been this excited for a game was probably like Fable 1. Like back yeah. in the day when they were promising like the fucking world and mm -hmm. didn't deliver, but it was still a great uh, game. It sucked. Did you hear that they closed the studio? Yeah, they closed Lionhead. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. That's so stupid. My understanding was the Fable game sold really well. So, well, I mean, it was a very it was it was an interesting concept. Yeah, I mean, the games were but, basically like a little bit GTA meets Zelda, but yeah. their problems were like their worlds were never open; they were like super closed off. Yeah, it was a it was a really it was like kind of not open but moderately open. Yeah, like you could go off the beaten path, but it pulled well, you right back onto the path. It was like it was like Zelda in that like. You had sort of like a little bit of like a hub thing and there was like different paths to take in areas, but it yeah. was the same. Yeah. So that sucks because I guess we'll never get a truly open world fable. I mean, I guess technically Microsoft still owns the property, so they could be giving so it could. to a new dev new developer. Yeah. Um, yeah. It'd be interesting. Anyway. Yeah, so you know, like I said, I played a little Destiny, a little Division. I nice. haven't started Black Ops Three, so you know, whatever. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you have better games. I feel about it. You have better games to play. I literally might trade it in just so I can get money to <laughs> Far Cry Primal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's your call. I mean, you'll probably get yeah. a decent price for Black Ops. Did they actually give yeah. you a disc in the bundle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. With a case. Yeah. yeah, with the case and everything. Yeah, because like everything I've seen these days from like friends and especially when I bought my Xbox, it's always been like they give you like a download code now. Yeah, so you can't. Which is fine. And it was, and, and no, I don't have the ugly three stripe uh, PlayStation. I have a regular slim, all black PlayStation. Well, I saw your picture, so I mean, I didn't, I didn't necessarily think yeah. that. Well, the, like one of one of the, one of my coworkers was like, "You got the ugly one." I'm like, "No, I don't got the ugly one." <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not have that ugly hunk of shit. Even though I would take it at, nice. at any time. <laughs> so did you? Now get, I realize. So you got a you got a brand new console then? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. That's cool. Well. Yeah, I'm just waiting to see. I'm just waiting to see you or Damo on one of these days that I'm on. Yeah. Uh, are, you, are, Destiny or Division. are you going to be on right after we end this? Because, I mean, it seems like we're pretty much done because, like, your dude's not showing up. Yeah. Uh, it's possible. I don't know. I'm kind of tired. And I had to check up on my lady, see how she's feeling. Oh, okay. But I'll it's, be on tomorrow, but you're working. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll be on later for sure. But, yeah. So, your only days off are Friday and Saturdays? Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. Well, I was gonna. I was always wondering, what do you do? Like, what do you do for a job? Uh, well, uh, obviously, the first answer, which I would like to be the podcasting most yeah. profitable answer, is that I'm a writer because I have a book. Yeah, yeah, and you do. Have I'm a, book. a podcaster, but that's the podcasting makes me zero money and actually saps forty dollars a month from my bank accounts. And the writing does like so I've not sold a lot of copies. I've sold like maybe a hundred copies, which is completely yeah. sad considering the numbers of both of my podcasts. Yeah. Which just means all of our listeners are dicks. Yeah. <laughs> which sucks. 
You're not recording this. Good thing. <laughs> I'm actually recording it, but I'm probably not putting it up because it's like. Uh, I mean, like, I guess I could because it's like 15 minutes long, but that seems kind of lame. Yeah, minus the calling all of our listeners dicks. <laughs> I've called them dicks on air. I don't care anymore. That's true. <laughs> okay, if you put this up, read more motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, right. Um,. But no, my actual job is uh, I'm an ADA automatic door installer. ADA is American Disabilities Act. So okay. uh, sliding doors and <coughs> like doors that swing open automatically with like yeah. push buttons or sensors. Um, so basically I'm like a, uh, I'm like a drop in, drop out contractor that fixes, repairs, and installs the box and the arm that automates a door. I don't Okay. That's what I do for yeah. the monies. Yeah. Um, but it's not necessary. I work for a... Huh? I work in a freezer, so... <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like, you gotta wear winter clothing all the time? Basically, you, like work, I have, you work in a controlled environment of the division. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Sucks. I work in a negative 10 to negative 20 degree environment for eight hours a day. Fuck me. Yeah, I work. I, yeah, I have a freezer suit and everything. Jesus. Yeah, man. You probably have to listen to podcasts just to say sane. Yeah, man. <laughs> Ugh, that sucks, dude. It's a... Eh. It's a job. It pays the bills. Uh, but like, you so know? like what I assume it's like food or is it like meat? Yes. Or? Yeah. It's, it's everything, anything frozen. It's, I work for a, uh, very large food, uh, distribution company. Oh, so like a, like a swans or like a grocery store thing or something. Yeah. Sort of like a, a Cisco, like a major one. It, it it right we send we it, pick orders for like i'm trying not to say it on on the air that way you know what i mean i don't get possibly in trouble if ever anybody oh uh, i can just i can ju I'll, I'll just stop it the citadel arrival is the first installment in a series of epic science fiction short stories reminiscent of the pulp fiction style it's a fast-paced story that will take you through twists and turns that you will not expect until they are thrust upon you with all the force excitement and chaos of a plasma cannon blast the story follows Katarl, a nobody cog in the working wheels of a futuristic society run completely by Megacorp, a corporation that carefully runs and manages the lives of the people living under its sphere of power. On one of Katarl's few and far between days off from work, an outing he had hoped would be fun and relaxing turns into an explosive adventure that drags him kicking and screaming into situations and challenges that will make him question every aspect of his life. Watch this colorful tapestry unfurl as Katarl and his newfound allies find their way through this classic, yet oddly surprising tale of good and evil, where nothing is quite what it appears to be. That's The Citadel Arrival by author Tim K. Trotter, available right now on Amazon Kindle Store and iTunes iBookstore for only $2.99. Dominic Armado, the voice of Guybrush Threepwood, and you're listening to a Dynamic Works production podcast. Guardian down. 